Do you happen to remember where you were exactly one month ago, on July the 25th? As a matter of fact, I do, because on that very same day, while I was still in bed, my phone was buzzing with messages pouring in from various friends. From Palermo, in Sicily, Giovanna and Alessandro were telling me that their house was almost burned down by a wildfire during the night, and they had to be rescued by firefighters. In parallel, from Milan, Marco was sharing videos of his apartment, which was flooded following a sudden and unprecedented hurricane. Natural events like these are becoming more and more frequent, and we know why. Earth, our planet, our very home, is warming. More specifically, our planet is warming because of us, humans, burning fossil fuels and releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But you already know that. By now, almost everyone knows that. Two years ago, the United Nations ran the largest climate survey ever, with 1.2 million respondents from over 50 countries, representing 80% of the world's population, a majority in every single continent, agreed that climate change is an emergency. Events like those striking Giovanna, Alessandro and Marco will only get worse, more frequent and intense, unless we act. And so act, we must. Rapidly scaling down fossil fuels and eventually completely eradicating them from our economies. Coal, petrol and methane must be consigned to history. And this we know. What we know less about is what will happen then. Have you ever thought about it? What will the future look like once we have given up fossil fuels completely? Let me sketch out for you the two main, most popular scenarios. Scenario number one, with or without climate change, the argument goes, humanity is about to get poorer. This is because cheap fossil fuels ushered in an era of unprecedented prosperity and therefore their demise will set us back by at least two centuries. Without fossil fuels, it will simply be impossible to move around fly, warm our homes, or feed the very planet. Our way of living and our personal freedoms will inevitably suffer. By show of hands, how many of you agree that this is the most likely future that awaits us? Okay, maybe you want to hear option two first. So, option two, or scenario number two. Sure, the green transition is something we have to do, the argument goes, but it is not going to be really transformational. After all, all we need to do is switch from one energy source to another, say move from coal to solar panels. What is the big deal in that? Whether it feeds on petrol or electricity, a car is a car and will continue to do what a car does, drive you around. At the aggregate level, our economy and our way of living will largely be left untouched, if not at the margins. So who would agree that this is the most likely future that expects us? Okay. It is my persuasion that both these scenarios will prove wrong. Today, I'm here to present you a radically different vision for our future. One that sees the green transition not only as a way to avoid climate-induced catastrophe, but as an opportunity for great economic and social reward. For that, we must start from two fundamental facts. The first is a realization of the momentous challenge ahead of us. The atmosphere will continue to become warmer and warmer, as long as we keep on adding greenhouse gases to it. 
It's a bit like an overfilled bathtub that will continue to spill over as long as you don't turn the water off. It is for this reason that by now 110 countries have agreed to become climate neutral by 2050. The second fundamental realization must be that we currently live effectively in a fossil fuel civilization, meaning that almost everything we do in one way or another, directly or indirectly, relies on fossil fuels and greenhouse gases. You might think that reading a book on your couch does not. How do you think that book was produced or transported to you? How about the couch? The implication is that in order to become climate neutral, in order to turn the water off in our bathtub metaphor, we will have to reinvent the whole of production and consumption. Energy generation, transport by sea, land and air, agriculture, housing, clothing and more. Such a radical transformation is impossible, you might think. And yet, it has happened before. Not once, but twice. In history, we call these periods industrial revolutions. And so, what should our overarching climate policy be? It is not one of marginal improvements to the economy, nor of panicked resignation to the inevitable catastrophe. Our climate policy must be to ignite a new revolutionary era, an era marked by accelerated technological progress, ushering in an industrial revolution, a green industrial revolution this time around. Those that see the green transition are simply switching one energy source for another or missing the point, mistaking the finger for the moon. The key is to understand that new energy sources have always marked the beginning of industrial revolutions, not the end of the story. This is because they generate new opportunities for new and better ways of doing things. Take the first industrial revolution, for instance. A switch to coal allowed for new ways of producing. Now, after millennia of destitution, an average family, thanks to industrialization, could afford basic products like candles for lighting, clothing, nails and scissors, cutlery and pots. Wealth and well-being improved. During the second industrial revolution, a switch to electricity allowed for the introduction of the assembly line. Production became even more efficient. For millennia, personal transportation had been extremely limited. If you were rich, you had a horse. If you were poor, you would walk. Inevitably, most people would only know their immediate surroundings. Now, thanks to the introduction of the bicycle, of the train, of the car, people's horizons and opportunities expanded immensely. And so let us not forget our past. Let us hone the lessons of history to inform our expectations about the future. The first and perhaps most fundamental lesson must be that if we are to become climate neutral, our economies and societies are about to undergo the greatest period of technology-led transformation since the ground-shifting introduction of the radio, of the telephone, of indoor plumbing, of the washing machine, of the plane. Think about it, this is exciting. Take our cities, for instance. The green transition will radically transform them, and for the better, I would argue. New electrified modes of transport will mean that the quality of the air will improve. Noise pollution will improve as well. Making our cities climate-proof will require planting trees and moss, reducing the current artificial division between us, humans, and nature. Isn't that beautiful? And it does not stop at that. Already in 2020, the International Energy Agency proclaimed that solar photovoltaic is the cheapest electricity source in history. That alone will open up plenty of new opportunities. The second fundamental lesson must be that certain technologies 
will establish themselves as crucial to our new green civilization. Countries and companies that manage to pioneer them will experience great economic reward in terms of profits and job creation, often reverberating for decades. Have you ever heard the names Benz, Daimler, Maybach? If you have, it's because you associate them with car brands. But these are the names of people. These are the names of German engineers that were pioneering crucial improvements in the car's engine in the late 1800s. Countries and companies that did not see that technology coming remained stuck in the past, kept on breeding horses, making saddles, making horseshoes, eventually facing economic decline. What this implies for us today is that to invest in the green transition is not only the right thing to do, it is the smart thing to do. Get there early and you will experience great economic rewards. Pioneer a new green technology and your name will echo throughout this century. The third and final lesson is that industrial revolutions surely generate some winners, but they also generate some losers. We all remember about the Luddites, who were people during the first industrial revolution who were afraid of the new technology and went around smashing machines. What this implies for us today is that we must take actions to spread the benefits of our new green economy, generate opportunities for all, or else people will slow down technological progress and our climate fight. Once again, this is not only the right thing to do, this is the smart thing to do. A few months ago, I was in the Netherlands at Rotterdam University, giving a lecture on the Green Industrial Revolution. At the end of my talk, a student approached me, tears in her eyes. Caught by climate anxiety, she asked me, Professor, your vision is great, but will we make it? The vision I've laid out before you today will not magically happen on its own. And surely not within the time frame we have to avoid a climate catastrophe. For that, your help is needed. Everybody's help matters because we need all the help we can get in this fight against time. And so what can we do to ignite a green technology boom and usher in the green industrial revolution? As citizens, support ambitious green policies at local and national level, together with strong investments in science and innovation. As students, build those green skills that will be needed to roll out green technologies throughout our economies. As consumers, think before buying. Favor the green product, giving firms a financial incentive to innovate, moving away from old paradigms. As employees, foster change from within. Push your managers to break with status quo and factor climate change into their decisions. And finally, as leaders within your own communities, share this vision for a greener, better future within our grasp. We're standing today at a crucial juncture for humanity, one of those moments where history is being made. And so I ask you that very important question, how are you planning to help achieve a green industrial revolution? Today, more than ever, the future is in our hands. Thank you.